My father-in-law. I've never met anyone like him. If you walk out to the beach and see a man swimming effortlessly with only one arm while the other holds a cigarette, that's my father-in-law. If you spot a man at the beach whose entire body is deeply tanned but with two distinct white horizontal stripes on his stomach, that's him. He never lies in the sun but prefers to sit and read under it, folding his stomach into two folds so they don't catch the sun. If you see someone using a computer mouse backwards, so when they move the mouse downwards, the cursor on the screen moves upwards, that's exactly my father-in-law. I've never met someone as peculiarly unique as him. He was born into an aristocratic family, so he never learned to do any household chores to help his wife, not even the smallest tasks. When she was young, she spent half her time working at his company and the other half doing household chores with the help of a maid. After having four children, she quit her job to stay home and take care of him completely. Once, we saw him wearing extremely old-fashioned clothes, with his pants pulled up almost to his chest, at a time when low-waisted pants were in fashion. We found out that she declared she wouldn't wash his clothes anymore. People work until they're sixty and then retire, but she washed his clothes and cooked for him for so many years, and now she's retired. So, he would wear the same set of clothes for a whole week before changing, but he wouldn't wash them, he would just throw them away. As his clothes ran out, he dug out older and older sets. First were from the nineties, then gradually back to the eighties, seventies. Until he wore clothes resembling those of the court jesters from centuries ago, at which point she reluctantly agreed to continue washing his clothes. My father-in-law only started using a computer at 70, and as I mentioned earlier, he uses the mouse upside down. Yet, he's incredibly skilled, all four of his children have to ask him to fix their computers whenever there's an issue. He's adept at using and quickly updating new computer software. Whenever a new generation of computers comes out, he immediately buys it. But he only keeps the four newest ones, the old ones he donates to charity. Once, our car broke down and needed a part replaced, but we had a trip planned. He said, give me two to three days to research, and I'll fix it for you. He bought books to read and study. He cut out a part from our washing machine and installed it in the car to replace the broken part. The car ran smoothly, and the washing machine still worked. Before, my father-in-law had a real estate investment company. He would buy land, build houses, and sell them. He was a civil engineer, but he always designed the houses himself. He invested, designed, and supervised construction, so he profited from every aspect. He only liked Mercedes cars, so he collected them from small to large. He found happiness in watching his wife choose which car to drive into town for coffee every morning. All the assets he made were in his wife's name. She owned the bank account, while he used a supplementary card. He retired with quite a large fortune. But in his free time, he started playing the stock market and began losing. The more he lost, the more he tried to recover, and the more he lost. Not only did he spend all his savings, but he also accumulated hundreds of thousands of euros in debt. So, they had to sell the twin villa he had built for his two elder sons, including my husband and his brother, for a rumored one million euros. Part of the money went to pay off the debt, and the rest was deposited in the bank for their old age. But this time, she was the sole account holder, not allowing him access. Every month, she gave him a few hundred euros for personal expenses only. He had another sum of money deposited in a bank earlier, but the bank used that money for investments that turned out to be losses, so he essentially lost it all. I'm not entirely clear on this matter, but essentially, the bank was at fault, yet they refused to compensate him. He wanted to hire a lawyer to sue, but she absolutely refused to spend money because she thought it was futile to sue a bank. 
For several years, he bought law books to read and study on his own. Then, he hired a low-grade lawyer with the personal expenses she gave him each month to save up for the lawsuit. This lawyer only did what he was told because my father-in-law didn't have a lawyer's license, so that's how it had to be done. In the end, he won the case, recovering all the money he had deposited in the bank plus the interest accumulated over the years. But he kept this victory secret from her because he was afraid she would keep it all to herself and not let him spend any. When she found out, she was furious and stopped talking to him. She moved to another room and has stayed there until today. Last summer, before returning to Vietnam, I had some cash on hand but was in a hurry and couldn't deposit it into my account, so I entrusted my father-in-law with 2,000 euros. A month later, upon my return, he handed me 2,600 euros and said, Son, I use that money to invest in stocks. If I lose, I'll still give you back 2,000 euros, but if I win, I'll give you whatever I make. If you want to continue playing, I'll keep playing for you, but if I lose this time, you have to take responsibility. Oh my, he's steadfast in his ways and won't budge. I told him, enough, I won't play anymore. Just give me the money back. This morning, my mother-in-law called to say that he had just been rushed to the hospital. My husband and I immediately rushed to the hospital, he's 82 years old, so we were very worried. When we arrived, he seemed exhausted, tears welling up in his eyes. He said, I don't know if I'll make it. I'm so tired, having trouble breathing. Then he asked us to go home and fetch his medical records because he was rushed to the hospital so suddenly he didn't have time to grab them. We asked if he needed his cell phone and charger, but he said no, he had them all here already. Glancing into his coat pocket, I saw two bulky cell phones on one side and a charger on the other. We felt sorry for him, but couldn't help but laugh because despite being 82 years old and in an emergency situation, he still brought along his cell phones and charger, but forgot his medical records. This afternoon, he was chatting away with us and said, don't come to visit me, talking wears me out. Talking like this through chat is less tiring for me. At 82 years old, he still diligently learns, although we don't know what he's learning for. He's like an encyclopedia of life. Whenever there's something we don't know, I ask my husband, and if he doesn't know, I call my father-in-law. Lately, he's been into photography. Since he's not very mobile, he often leaves pieces of bread on the windowsill for the birds to eat, and he takes photos of them. Lately, he's been sick, but refuses to listen to the doctor. The doctor told him to drink two liters of water a day and to avoid alcohol, so he substitutes those two liters of water with three bottles of beer and one bottle of tonic. When I went to the hospital, he asked me to buy him a bottle of tonic, then he poured water from the hospital-provided mineral water bottle and replaced it with tonic water to avoid detection by the doctors and nurses. I scolded him. I asked, do you know that what you're doing is harmful to your health? He replied, yes, I do, but I can't stand that disgusting filtered water. If I abstain from it, I'll die sooner. Have you ever met someone like my father-in-law? We went home to find his medical records. It was the first time I entered his bedroom since my mother-in-law moved to another room and he turned it into his own kingdom. Normally, he doesn't like anyone entering. He used to have a studio downstairs, and even though he retired, he'd dress neatly and work in the studio from 8am to 8pm. Every day, he only sat with the family during lunch and dinner. For nearly 20 years since retirement, all his research and inventions came from that room. This year, he's become weaker, so he moved all his stuff to the bedroom and works there to avoid going up and down. I didn't recognize his once beautiful bedroom anymore, it was cluttered with stuff. Around the bed were four computers, over a dozen cameras, 
and various types of drills. The toilet had been converted into a library, and he started using his son's toilet next door, reasoning, I go to the library more often than the toilet, so I don't need a toilet in the bedroom. As I opened a drawer to find his medical records, I was surprised and a little startled to see a rifle. But my husband said it's just an air rifle for sports, not dangerous. After completing the task of retrieving his medical records, we began the second task, following his instructions that I recorded on my phone, log into his account to check today's stock market situation. First, we had to turn on computer 1, find a file containing a password to turn on computer 2, and in computer 2, there would be a password to unlock computer 3. And so on until we logged into his account and took screenshots of the fluctuating numbers to show him. His Wi-Fi systems connecting to his computers were also intricate, only he could understand them. A few years ago, whenever we came back from Vietnam to Italy, we always stayed at their house. When I complained about the weak Wi-Fi because the router was placed far from my room, he immediately cut a few cans of Coca-Cola and made a signal booster system for me like the illustration below. Sure enough, the Wi-Fi signal went from one bar to three bars, and I could browse Facebook super fast. I'm writing this while on the way to visit him. Now that I've arrived at the hospital, he's much better. I conveyed your wishes to him, and he was deeply touched and thanked you all very much. Don't trust anyone, don't look at anyone, don't listen to anyone. Just look at your own child. Subi was pushing the cart to the market. An elderly man behind him remarked loudly, a tall father like that shouldn't let the little one push the cart. Since Baibo was born, his parents haven't done many things that tradition often dictates. His mother doesn't rock or sleep with Baibo. She just puts the two kids in their sleeping bags, places them in the crib, then closes the door and leaves. His mother doesn't let the two kids eat whenever they want. She feeds them at set meal times. His mother doesn't give in to their every demand. She only provides what they need, while considering their wants carefully. His mother lets Subi do personal tasks on his own from an early age. His grandfather often asks, is Subi clean when he bathes himself? Is he dirty after using the bathroom? Many yes or no questions. His mother often ignores him, saying, yes, of course. If not, he'll learn. One day, because she had to attend to something, his mother asked Subwa to feed him. A young woman who came to visit saw him eating enthusiastically and said, he's eating so well, why didn't you feed him more? His mother didn't feed him more. He learns to be self-reliant from very basic things. His mother doesn't wake Baibo up for school. They wake up, study, read, play, and prepare their own breakfast. If they're late for school, they'll have to bear the consequences, because it's not their mother's responsibility. His mother leaves him alone to pick up food fallen on the floor of the mall. She doesn't help. She lets him take responsibility for his actions. He faces many eyes staring at him alone. It's how he learns to overcome crises and face life. His mother doesn't choose to live near top-rated schools. She doesn't serve him a prepared meal. She lets him choose, make an effort, step forward, and achieve on his own. His parents are indifferent like that. Letting go to grasp. Not doing anything to make something happen. And later, when Baibo becomes a parent, the children will understand that saying yes is always easier than saying no. As his mother once read, doing nothing is harder than doing something. Parents, teaching children in the Japanese way, the German way, the American way, there is no one right method for your child. Only teaching them in the style of Mother Lin, Mother Mai, Mother Van, the style of Mother X specifically for your child X. Only you, 
The mother, the one who creates your child from flesh and blood, connected to your child by invisible sensory threads, the one who loves and understands your child, can know how to walk with your child on each step of their life journey. Don't trust anyone, don't look at anyone, don't listen to anyone. Just look at your own child. The articles by famous people about raising children, the stories of hot moms are just to give you another perspective. Don't delve into details, into words. Capture the essence. If we do happen to meet in parenting views, rely on your own child, take your own path. To do or not to do is up to your child, up to you, up to each family situation.